Hello and welcome, Bruce Fulton here. Uh, this is the first of four lectures on database normalization. Uh, these are going to be relatively brief, high-level overviews. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details about theory, but I would like you to get a general idea of what database normalization is. And in particular, I'd like you to understand the four uh, forms, the four normal forms, first, second, third, and fourth and get a good handle on what those really mean. Sometimes those are presented in pretty complicated language. I'm going to try to make these really simple and show you some very clear examples of what the four normal forms are. Uh, and that should give you preparation maybe to go out on the web or maybe into your textbook uh, and drill into a little bit more detail about what they are. Uh, so these are going to be relatively short, I hope, uh, and uh, just uh, designed to give you uh, kind of an overview. Uh, so let's go into an introduction about what database normalization is first. Um, so normalization is the process of identifying and correcting problems that would cause update anomalies. And so an update anomaly exists when um, there are instances of duplicated or redundant uh, data. Uh, and when you update data, it gets updated in one place in your database and not another. So, for example, if you have an address and that address exists in multiple places in your database and you go to update it and you update it in one place, if you haven't designed your database correctly uh, and taken care of all the instances of where that address might exist, it might um, not be corrected in all places in the database and then you have data inconsistencies and of course that's um, that's a big problem uh, and so m most of the time uh, the, the redundancies and, and update anomalies occur uh, because uh, the database design has allowed you to store uh, information in more than one place and usually that's because uh, the tables haven't been designed properly. Uh, if your tables or relations, um, tables relations really sort of mean the same thing, uh, are designed properly, information really should be stored uh, in only one place. And so the process of normalization uh, is the process of eliminating redundancy. Uh, and as we go through the four normal forms, the key is to, at each stage, look and see where information might be duplicated. Uh, break that information off into separate tables. Uh, and that's pretty much what normalization is all about. Uh, and so redundant information is usually an indication that when you've designed a table, you've actually really got a couple of tables or a couple of relations hidden away inside the table. And we'll see how that goes as we go along. Uh, so the, the key or the strategy um, the strategy that we go through when we normalize tables is we find that redundant information and we break that information off into multiple tables. And we do this in a specific order. Uh, we start first to make sure that it's in first normal form uh, when we break our tables off. If we need to, uh, then we check each one of those tables to make sure that each one of them is in second normal form. Then we check each of those tables to make sure they're in third normal form. Uh, and finally, fourth normal form. Uh, so we'll proceed in order. So let's take a look at first normal form. Uh, and first normal form uh, says that there are no repeating groups. Now, uh, if you look at, at maybe some other lectures that are out there, uh, there may be some other baggage that goes along with that. For example, data values are atomic, uh, field names are unique, the relation is a primary key, the order of rows doesn't matter. So sometimes uh, those will go along with it. The, the first normal form uh, uh, main idea is that there's no repeating groups. These other things uh, are, are actually basic characteristics of what makes a relation in a relational database. If these other things aren't true, then uh, it's, it's not really a relation to begin with, uh, but we'll go through them. Uh, and let's consider the case of a company that wants to keep track of its customers and how many of its products uh, its customers have bought. Uh, so let's assume that there are th the company makes three items. A um, uh, let's see, what have I cooked up? Yes, a printer, a fax, and a modem. Uh, and they've been doing this on a spreadsheet. Uh, and now they want to convert to a database. So 
I, I've looked at three ways you'll typically see this on a spreadsheet, and we'll go through the problems that are associated with this. So uh, the first example is one way the company might have kept track of this on a spreadsheet where they'll have a single line item with the customer and the customer information. There may be some other things going on here. And then they'll just start extending this out on the right each time the customer uh, buys another product. They'll just um, uh, go out to the right here and add another column uh, for the product they bought. So uh, this first customer has bought three products. Uh, the second customer only has one. Uh, so uh, we see that we have repeating groups here. Uh, another way to handle this would be just to have one uh, column for product, but then you need a line each time uh, the customer buys a new product. Uh, a third way this is sometimes handled on spreadsheets is uh, they put all of the products in one column in one cell, uh, and they've separated these by commas. Uh, let's talk about a couple of the other issues that we raised in in the. Um, uh, these these um, statements here that, that are really issues that have to do with, with whether the table is a, a relation at all. So uh, when we talk about data values are atomic, uh, here we have a first name and a last name. And what atomic means is it's reduced to its simplest form. Uh, this is really compound here. We have a first name and a last name. So this this single cell here could be split into two values, first name and last name. Uh, we also have an example of a non-atomic uh, attribute here, uh, where printer, fax, and modem all exist here. This could be broken out into three, uh, three separate values. Uh, where we have field names are not unique, obviously. Here we have three, um, three columns, each title product. So uh, we have a problem there. Uh, we do have a primary key. We have a customer ID, which is unique. Uh, but when we look at the spreadsheet as it's uh, constructed over here, we wouldn't be able to enter this into a relational database because uh, we must have unique values on each line. Uh, and we wouldn't be able to enter this because we couldn't have this primary key here entered three separate times on three separate rows. Um, so we do have a primary key, but, but we wouldn't be able to handle our table uh, in this way. Uh, and finally, the, the order of rows doesn't matter. That, that's the case here. There's no implied order to these rows. So how we need to deal with this uh, is to recognize that uh, this is actually a many-to-many -many relationship between customers and products. Uh, one customer can own many products. Each product can be owned by many customers. Uh, and so we need to split this out actually into three different um, uh, three different relations. Uh, so we would have a customer's relation, which would have our customer information. We would have a product's uh, relation, uh, and that would look like this. It would have just three entries in it. That would be the whole table here. Uh, we would have a product ID uh, that would be one for printer, two for fax, three for modem, uh, however that would be arranged. Uh, and then we would have what's called junction table. Sometimes it's called a linking table, uh, other names. Uh, this is the table that would have in it um, for each customer and that owns each product uh, an entry. So customer ID, uh, this customer would have um, an entry in it for owning one printer. So customer one owns uh, product one, customer one owns product two, Customer one owns product three, customer two owns product two only, uh, and so on. And so this table uh, would have a record in it for each instance of a customer owning a specific product. Uh, so that's the many-to-many -many relationship. Uh, I've gone ahead and shown you here at the bottom uh, an entity relation diagram. Here we have the customer's uh, relation or entity. Uh, with the attributes that we've created here. We have the products relation or entity with the product ID and the product name. Here we have what's called an associative entity. This is uh, what, what results in our junction table. And the relationship here between products and the associative entity or linking uh, table, junction table, is one to many. 
here between the customers and the associative entity or linking table or junction table as it's called is one to many. This creates a many to many relationship between customers and products. One customer can own many products. Many products can be owned. One product can be owned by many customers. So this is the solution to uh, the issue that we have um, with um, repeating groups. Uh, this solution here is now in first normal form. Let's take a look at another example. Uh, and this may almost seem trivial. Uh, let's, supply, let's, let's suppose that uh, we have an employees table and we brought over a spreadsheet that shows uh, the employee and their January, February, March salary. Perhaps this goes out for a year. Uh, and let's assume that this is a budgeting salary. Uh, and let's further assume that they make the same salary every month. Uh, and if we look at what that might be in a spreadsheet, we could see something like this, where if their salary is the same every month, uh, we would see a spreadsheet that looks uh, very similar to this. Uh, and, and this is frequently seen uh, if for budgeting purposes where you might add and total these up uh, and um, uh, see various, um, uh, various uses for this uh, as these are brought over uh, from a manual bookkeeping uh, perspective. Uh, now, uh, these have different column names, so technically this is all right. This, this doesn't badly violate first normal form, but if you think about this, this, this really is the same information. And in a relational database, this can be extracted or created with a report, so there really is no sense taking up all this room. Uh, so we could create a single column monthly salary and derive this if we needed to in a report. Now, if it turns out they did make different salaries, uh, in different months. Uh, it may still be better to pull this off into a separate table, uh, perhaps some kind of a payroll system or some other uh, entity or relation. Uh, so this is another example uh, of, of repeating groups that, that you may want to break off. So let's review then uh, what first normal form is. Uh, the main thing is no repeating groups. Uh, these others are often seen in relationship to uh, first normal form. These are actually characteristics of a relation uh, in a relational database, uh, but you will sometimes see them with first normal form. So uh, that concludes the first of the four lectures. I hope that makes uh, a bit of sense to you seeing the examples. Uh, and we'll now move on to uh, the second lecture, second normal form. Thank you for watching.